This is some good stuff. Hey, welcome to another episode of Shock, Shock Treatment. This is Pastor Joseph Graham coming to you from Road to Damascus Christian Church out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And today's topic is rejection. The best thing that ever happened to me. Okay, okay. I know you're saying to yourself, how can rejection be a good thing? Well, when I talked to my good friend Webster, Webster tells me that rejection is what exactly? Well, it's plain as day. It is the refusal to grant or consider or to deny admittance to. And the reality is, have you ever felt like someone didn't consider you? Have you ever had a group of people push you out? Have you ever tried to extend kindness, love, and respect, but people didn't extend it back to you? And you feel like you're the black sheep of the family. You that one. You that crazy one. You that one in the group. You that one of your mom's sons or daughters that they count out and say they is crazy. Have you ever felt like you've been pushed to the rear? Well, listen, let us find out. Is there anybody in the word that has felt like you? Let's go to the scripture. Hit me with the word. It says here in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verse 1, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king above his sons. What's so awesome about this scripture is, guess what? God has decided that this king named Saul can no longer be king. He started out good and went bad. Sounds like some of our relationships. And so what happens is God rejects Saul and he sends the prophet Samuel to a man named Jesse's house to say one of his sons is king. But this is what's amazing. When Jesse gets there, he tells, I mean, when Samuel gets to Jesse's house, he tells him, gather all your sons in the room. And he had his oil with him. But as he lifted up the horn of oil, it would not pour on any of his sons. Look at this in the word. 1 Samuel 16, verse 10. It says, again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord hath not chosen these. Isn't that something? He tells him to go get all of his sons. He gets seven of his sons. And when God, when they pass by, God does not choose any of them. And it's so bad that Samuel has to ask him, do you have any more sons? And amazing. When you look at 1 Samuel 16 and 11, it says, there remaineth yet the youngest and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him for we will not sit down until he come thither. I want y'all to understand that if you've ever been rejected and you ever felt like people that should have cared about you, should have protected you, should have included you, left you out. Well, listen, there's people in the word of God in the Bible just like that. Here it is. Jesse takes it upon himself not to include his youngest son. Is that you? Are you the one that conveniently gets pushed out from being with the rest of the bunch? But, he, but guess what? The oil did not pour on any of them because God knew who he had chosen. And what happens is Samuel tells them, none of us can sit down until he comes. And let's check out what happened. It says here in verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. That means he was a little rough, but he sure was attractive. That's why you can't let people hate on you. You may not look like everybody else, but the Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And guess what? Guess what happens? It says, and the Lord said, arise, anoint him for this is he. It's amazing that the Bible says that, that the Lord shall prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And right there in his, in the presence of a father who did not include him. In the presence of a father who purposely left him out and didn't even consider him his child, yet God chose him right in and amongst his family. And I'm here to tell you that if you've been rejected, then there's a, I know that the truth of the matter is that God has chosen you. Don't hold on to it. 
I tell everyone, when you look at the word reject, R-E-J-E-C-T, there's another word inside of the word reject. You know what it is? Eject. That means every time you go through rejection, it's actually an opportunity for ejection, which means to launch and to push you further than where you are and to push you up. So you better know for all the moments you've had to endure being pushed out, God is providing a way for you to push up, be pushed up. Listen, if you're out there and you're not saved, you've not given your life to Christ or you have, but you've backslidden, then I want you right now to pray with me so you can give your life to Christ. And repeat after me. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for my sins. And I ask him to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior and heal me from all the rejection of I've experienced because now I know that I've been accepted by you. If you've prayed that prayer, that means you're now in the kingdom of God and a child of God. Listen, you tune in again and come and check us out at Shock Tree, the Road to the Masters Christian Church. This is Pastor Joseph Graham signing off. Till next time.